Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. 7.37, and happy Monday morning to you. Brian Neiman, Brian Wilson with you. Pleased to have Stuart Varney on the line, anchor of Varney and Company. Check him out 9.20 this morning on Fox Business. Hey, Stuart, how are you? I am well, Brian. And Brian, how are you guys? How are you doing? Pretty well. So on Friday, the president held a press conference. Really, <laughs> it was a disastrous one for him, where he said the private sector is doing fine. So I have two questions for you. Number one, economically, is he right? And number two, politically, how much damage will this do for the president's reelection bid? Well, let's start with number one, shall we? Sure. The president is wrong. Uh, over the weekend, lots of people have been doing lots of digging. Is the private sector doing fine? Well, here's the number. In January of 2008, that was the peak employment time in the United States. From January of 2008 until now, the economy has lost a total of 5 million jobs. Down. That's 5 million fewer jobs now than in January 2008. Now, 4 million of those lost jobs are private sector jobs. And at the same time, the number of people employed by the federal government has gone up right. 225,000. So, if the president says the private sector is doing just fine, on the employment front, he is wrong. And if he's saying that the government is that's the reason why we've got job losses, again, he's wrong federal government employment has actually gone up. So, count one, I'm afraid to say the president is wrong, factually. Although, at the state level, local levels, we are seeing public sector jobs uh, being lost. That is correct. Right, right. Again, look at the numbers. We're down just over 400,000 state municipal jo worker jobs from January of 08 until now. All right, to, yeah, my, to my second question, you, you know politics. It's all part, it's intertwined now, especially with Wall Street and Washington. How much damage does this do to the president? Well, I think uh, the Republicans are going to use that line. The private sector is doing just fine. Uh, I'm sure that that's going to appear on campaign ads if it hasn't already. Uh, because, again, the president, he, he seems out of touch with what's really going on on the ground. So, again, I think it was a, it's a political negative for the president. You know, he called that press conference not to talk about private sector and jobs and public right. sector. He called it to urge the Europeans to bail out Spain. And he got what he wanted. It happened over the weekend. Mm -hmm. But lost in all of that, uh, it, it, that was all lost because everybody concentrated on his private sector is doing fine gaffe. Well, some have suggested that this was a comment taken out of context and all that kind of stuff. To me, when I heard it, it says this is where the guy's head is at. He's more concerned about the, the private sector, I mean, so the public sector jobs, which are largely government jobs, than he is about free enterprise. In other words, he's more concerned about government than he is about people who go out and, and, and create products and, and create jobs. At a speech, I believe, about two years ago at a major university, the president said what the individual cannot do and the corporation will not do, the government will do. This is a government man. He comes at the economy from the government's perspective. He thinks that the way to increase prosperity and employment in America is to go out and employ more government people. Well, I profoundly disagree, and that's going to be put to the people at this election, because I think that's the defining issue of this election, government or private enterprise. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, so what happened in Europe over the weekend? Spain did get the bailout, as you said. It was $125 billion. I guess the money's coming from other countries, from the IMF. Where exactly is this money coming from, and where is it going? What a mess. Okay, the government of Spain is insolvent. It needs to borrow money. It has been borrowing money from its own banks. Its own banks have run out of money. So those banks are now getting a loan from the rest of Europe to the tune of $125 billion. Mm. Where's that money coming from? Other European countries, some of which are insolvent. Italy, for example, is supposed to, spare, to provide about $25 billion of this total. Where are they going to get the money from? So the money's just going round and round and round in circles. Meanwhile, Spain and everybody else increases their indebtedness. Mm. Spain now uh, has borrowed $125 billion. The Greeks have borrowed $300 billion. Portugal's borrowed $100 billion. Ireland's borrowed $90 billion. And it's, there's no end in sight. We're going from crisis to crisis. Next week, there's a big meeting of all the leaders of Europe, America, and some parts of Asia. And I'll bet they're going to discuss the mother of all bailouts. 
will they have a gigantic European tarp or not? And that's going to be decided next week, I think. But at the end of the day, who, who holds the bag on this? I mean, who's the last one standing? That's a good question. Um, the owners of sovereign debt. Who owns the debt of Spain, Italy, Portugal, etc., etc., etc.? Who actually owns it? Well, thus far, it's been heavily concentrated in the banks. That's why the banks are so shaky. They're the ones who are going to lose out big time if any of these countries default on their sovereign debt. They lost out big when Greece defaulted. They'll lose out heavily if Spain defaults, or Italy, or Portugal, or any place else. It's the banks that are at risk, and therefore the entire financial system that is at risk. All right, here's one of those good news, bad news stories that, you know, we always ask whether we're going to get the, the, the good news, to or the bad news, to. Well, here's one you could be on both sides. <laughs> Gas prices are low. The reason gas prices are low is bad. <laughs> oh, thanks very much, Brian. Teed it up nicely for me, didn't you? <laughs> the average price for a gallon of gasoline is down to $3.54 a gallon, according to AAA. That's down about, what, 40 cents from the high in, mm -hmm. uh, in March? That is clearly good news. I suppose you could say that the bad news is the reason for that decline, which is a very soft global economy. I suppose that's bad news. Yep. All well, right. There you have it. Uh, the most important question for me, at least this morning, uh, without Wayne Rooney being able to play today, will your uh, English team be able to uh, defeat France in the uh, European Championships? Oh, there's absolutely no question about it, Brian. I mean, that's a foregone conclusion, <laughs> isn't it? And I will be watching. <laughs> but more to the point, did you see on Saturday in New York City, Argentina played Brazil to a sellout crowd of 82,000. Wow. Now, that tells me that soccer has arrived. Foreign yes. soccer has arrived in America. 82,000 people. Mm -hmm. Some of them paid $200 a ticket. They crammed the stadium for two foreign soccer teams, for heaven's sake. That's awesome. The question is how many Americans were in the stadium, because there were only like 20,000 down in uh, Florida to watch the U.S. national team play in a World Cup qualifier, which was a little disturbing for me. Oh, I think that Americans have leapfrogged over domestic soccer and gone straight to the cream of the crop uh -huh. in Europe. All right. Good luck for your three Lions, right? That's what they're called, something like that? Something like that. Yeah, all right, all right Stu, we'll talk Thanks, to you later. Good luck, guys.